Hello everyone from Chengdu, China. I'm Catherine from the state of Virginia in the US and I have been living in China since 2018. So today I'm going to share with you guys some things that I miss about the US, especially since it's been two years since I've been back. This is the longest consecutive time I've ever spent away from the US, which is pretty crazy. And during this video, I'll be walking through the apartment complex we're staying in and I'm also taking Waze Brothers dog pudding for a walk. If you hear any dog noises, it's not me, it is pudding. So anyway, for some background information, the last time I was in the US was February, March 2020. My university here in China was closed for a few months in the spring of 2020 and then it reopened and I finished my master's degree in environmental engineering and now I'm doing a gap year of traveling around China. Since I've been away from the US for so long, I'm sure I'll be having some reverse culture shock when I finally do go back and visit in the summer. So I'll definitely be sharing that with you guys. But for now, let's talk about the things that I miss. So let's get the obvious one out of the way first, which is family and friends. It absolutely sucks to be separated from them for so long. That's just like pretty much the worst part of living abroad. During the pandemic, China has a semi like almost closed border there are some exceptions obviously like if you have a green card a work visa there are some types of residence permits that will allow you to come in and out and fortunately i now have one of those precious things so i am going back to the us in a couple months so anyway being away from family and friends sucks and i missed my grandmother's funeral i missed my best friend's wedding i've been missing our like family reunions every year in the summer and our family home in vermont i just keep missing all these things so that's just really unfortunate honestly but on the bright side it's 2022 after all so we have voice calls and video calls and all of these ways to stay in contact with people anyway on to some more specific items one of the main things i miss the most honestly is all different types of foods and on the whole i prefer chinese food to western food there's a huge diversity of options. There's so many delicious things, but I feel like there are three things that the US does better. Fast food, desserts, and snacks. And for fast food, I'm not talking about like... So for fast food, I'm not talking about like KFC, McDonald's, like the bottom of the barrel stuff. I'm talking like the good fast food, okay? And I'm sure this is up for a certain degree of debate, but whatever. These are the fast food restaurants that I miss personally. Popeyes, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Chipotle. These like good fast food restaurants are not available here. Uh, a couple of them do exist in like a very mutated form. That would be Popeyes and Taco Bell. But trust me, they are really are mutated to the point where they are no longer recognizable. And back to the snack and dessert thing, there are quite a few American snack brands that are here, like Oreos and Pringles and Chips Ahoy. You can find that stuff here, but you know, the junk food and dessert scene just cannot compare to the US. In the US, you can find like seriously like hundreds of different flavors of ice cream, and they have those frozen yogurt places where you can put all the sugary toppings on everything. And like, it's really hard to find a good milkshake in China. Like it's a big deal when we do encounter one. The thing is, I actually took a lot of these things for granted when I was actually living in the US, but now that I am abroad, I am realizing just how important they were to my life. It's part of my DNA, you know, like Americans love sugar, okay? And as for the snacks, I do enjoy the healthy snacks in China. They have so many like freeze dried or dried vegetables and fruits and like, like on the healthy snack scene, it's great here, but I'm talking junk food, okay? Like the unhealthy snacks. I am not a fan of the like potato chip flavors here or the flavors of any of those like bagged snacks, you know? They've got flavors like crab or tomato, cucumber, yogurt, just like all kinds of flavors that are just not my thing. But you know, every country has its own flavor preferences, right? Personally, I love salt and vinegar, but Wei thinks they're disgusting. One other thing that I miss about the US is some of the holidays that we celebrate there. 
especially Halloween and Christmas. And it's not really even about like the day itself. You know, I haven't been trick-or-treating in like 10 years. I don't even want Christmas presents at this age. Just buy me some socks or something. It's not about the actual day. It's about the whole festive atmosphere that surrounds it, like the whole month leading up to it. So for Halloween, that's seeing people putting like ghosts and gravestones and stuff in their yard, weird pumpkins on everybody's doorstep, pumpkin patches and corn mazes and all these cute things that just don't really exist here. You know, I just miss that fall vibe in the US. Like fall in the US is so much fun. Another one, of, as I just mentioned, is Christmas. The malls will get all decked out with decorations and I love just walking around in there and seeing kids taking photos with Santa, seeing all the decorations in people's yards and how their homes are all covered in Christmas lights and, you know, setting up the tree with my parents. All of the awful, tacky Christmas movies on TV. It's just part of that, part of that festive atmosphere, you know? Like, you gotta watch some garbage Christmas movies. The festive atmosphere around Christmas and Halloween is really something else. There are a lot of holidays in China too, by a number, probably more than in the US. There's none that's really comparable to Halloween. Halloween is just like off the wall. It's just like a crazy holiday to even exist in the first place. But the equivalent of Christmas here is Chinese New Year. And in certain parts of the country, for example, the Southeast, like Guangdong, you can get a really fun, festive Chinese New Year atmosphere. For example, lion and dragon dances, people leaving offerings for ancestors out on the street or in temples, tangerine trees everywhere, firecrackers. It was awesome, it was really wild, but you won't necessarily get such a vibrant Chinese New Year in every single part of the country. There's this general sentiment now that Chinese New Year is not as exciting as it was in people's childhoods because the country has been urbanizing. So a lot of people are leaving their traditional homes in rural areas and coming out to big cities like this. And in that process, a lot of traditions kind of fade a little bit. But if you do want to find a really vibrant, fun Chinese New Year atmosphere, either go to some rural areas, go to Guangdong, or I'm sure there are other parts of the country that have it too, but I haven't been there yet. So in future years, I'll definitely try Chinese New Year in some various different parts of the country and see how it is. But that's been my experience so far. Guangdong was the best. Love it. The next thing is a little bit specific because not all suburbs or cities in the US will have this but mine did and many others do, which is access to nature that has not been manicured by humans. No like perfectly sculpted parks or engineered riverbeds, just nature as it is. And I'm not saying that China doesn't have that, obviously, like I've seen some incredible nature here, especially in the mountainous areas, but it's not super accessible in most places. You know, if you live in a pretty economically developed area, in a city, in a suburb, in a town. It's quite difficult for you to access nature that has not been manicured by humans in some way, whether it's for a park or for agriculture, any of that. So that is something that is pretty important to me because I was raised in a place that had a lot of untouched nature. We had this amazing park near my home. And when I say park, I don't mean like this kind of park. It was just like literally a chunk of forest. And I really want something like that. I know those places exist, I have been to them before, to some, you know, reasonably economically developed places that were close to untouched nature, and I'm willing to make sacrifices in other areas if it means a longer commute or less access to, like, the best city amenities, fine, so be it, just so I can have some untouched nature a little closer to home. But I have to say, even if I can't achieve that, it's still not the end of the world because cities in China are so green you know like look at this apartment garden this is not some like luxury apartment or something apartment complexes like this are a dime a dozen in new developments of chinese cities nowadays this is just a run-of-the-mill apartment complex cities here are super green they've got so many parks and so many beautiful lakes and i absolutely love it i think it's awesome so even if i can't find my nature, paradise. At least there's green stuff everywhere, right?
One more thing that I really miss about the US is American beaches because I'm from the East Coast and we used to go to the beach every summer when I was younger. So it's this really nostalgic thing for me. And I'm not saying China doesn't have nice coastlines. We've seen gorgeous rocky cliffs in Dalian, classic sand beaches in Yantai. We've seen beautiful blue waters in Sanya, but it's not all about the sand and the water. For me, it's about the whole vibe of East Coast beaches, like that cute beach culture, the colorful wooden houses and the tacky souvenir shops and the piers, the little marsh boardwalk things. You know, that's something that you just can't quite replicate over here. So I think the main takeaway of this for any of you who have not ever experienced living abroad is that you will end up missing so many things that you didn't really even think about in your everyday life in your home country, you know. You'll miss all of the most miscellaneous and random things. Like I only got into the main ones for me, but there are so many other little things like craft stores, amusement parks with more than like two roller coasters, swing sets that adults can actually fit on. I love swings, okay? Frozen pizzas, canoeing. There's just so many little things that I never really thought about that much when I was actually living in the US. But now that I'm here, I'm like, man, you know, I miss those things. And I'm excited to be reunited with those things again. And I'll definitely share some of my experience back in the US with you guys, make some vlogs. But for now, that's all for today's video. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Wei and I want to do a question answering video soon. And if you've ever lived abroad or you want to live abroad, I'd love to hear your stories in the comments. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.